Hungerford uh, is a story about a group of teenagers whose lives get turned upside down when their hometown is taken over by sinister forces. So for several years I had been working on um, my own YouTube videos and with Jesse Cleverly, the creative director of Wildsy Studios, uh, we co-wrote together Hungerford over the course of about six to eight months. And it got to the point with Hungerford where it was like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to imply my skills as a visual effects artist and director and telling a full, a full frontal story with, with arcs to also telling a story with, with the camera. So we shot it on a Canon C300, which is a funny story behind that, which is I'd, I'd never used one ever. And we picked one up the day before the shoot and our, my producer, Jesse, gave it to me and he basically said, you've got 24 hours, learn how to use it. <laughs> so I was running around Hungerford High Street with it, just trying, okay, so what does that button do? Oh, fantastic camera to shoot on, I recommend it to anybody. Before Hungerford, I cut everything on Sony Vegas. And I said to the two producers, Jesse and Miles, I said, I can cut this film on, <laughs> on Sony Vegas. And they went, mm, we'd prefer if you cut on Premiere. And I said, OK, so I, I learnt Premiere for the film while I was cutting the film. And all the visual effects were done in Adobe After Effects. What you use at the end of the day doesn't matter. You know, the technology we have available to us now is just unbelievable. Um, and I think that gives a lot of filmmakers, you know, for the future, a lot of hope. Tom Scarlett, who plays Adam Martell, is my cousin. And Sam Carter, who plays Kipper, is my best friend. It's funny because originally Phil was going to be a guy. Um, it was going to be four guys in the flat until Georgia came along and we said, oh, we're not, we're not utilising Georgia enough. Why don't we make her Adam's sister? Because my friend Josh, who was going to play Phil, dropped out, unfortunately. So we needed to fill, fill shoes. And then it, was, it just it snapped into our heads. It was like, oh my God, we call her Phil because she's one of the guys. And Hungerford's a weird one for me because we shot all of it in Sam Carter's flat. That flat, you know, we, we didn't rent it. We, that was, he owned it. And I lived there for almost six months. So there's a, there's a strange piece of Hungerford that kind of is, is very deep in my heart because it's so close to my life and to our life. And I think it felt more authentic. It's often very hard to create real drama and, and a real dynamic relationship with people. I, again, was trying to approach it. OK, so we're shooting this found footage. Now, what that means to me is making everything as real as possible. We, we wrote up. Over the, over the course of kind of eight months, a 60 page story document. For every scene, we knew where each character came into the scene and left the scene, uh, what the conflict and the struggle was within the scene. And then we went, uh, we basically went and rented a rehearsal studio for two weeks and we just hammered out the scenes. There wasn't like a, a set structure to how everything should be. It was like, okay, so this is the scene. Cohen, you're like this and you're going to come out of it like this. But remember, you need to get that piece of information across. Some of the finished film were moments that, that off the top of our heads because they were actually all supposed to go out, go out and get a kebab. And we were like, maybe they should have a little piss up. We just kept shooting. Loads of different moments. Cohen coming in with a guitar and his dressing gown, singing and serenading. And again, it was like we had all this footage. It's like, OK, so what do we like? What, what works? What kind of gets the point? And I think for a found footage movie, I think it was a really clever, clever decision. I really wanted to make sure we incorporated the camera as much as we could. I didn't want the audience to feel like observers. I wanted the audience to feel like they were part of the action. For instance, when the bug is revealed for the first time, and I deliberately wanted it to crawl up the, the table and over the camera, because then all of a sudden, the audience aren't just sat there watching it, it's in their face. And you're, you're there with the characters in that situation going, oh, what was that? That again, just makes the scenario so much more engaging. So it was a joint effort really to, to to push it as far as we can. We got a PR company called um, Hot Cherry, helped push the film to a lot of places, uh, places like Bloody Disgusting to get a review and so on and so forth. So, I mean, we finished Hungerford in April this year. And since then, it's been a very slow burn and it would kind of spike where we'd have a screening or a premiere and then there'd be a couple of rumblings, the odd review. And, I mean, there's, there's film festivals already next year that, that we've got into. You have to be patient and you have to let it almost simmer. So we are currently at the moment in pre-production for Hungerford 2. Better, bigger, tighter. I've just recently begun preparing my own short film, which I'm really excited about, which is all set in space, which is going to be 
awesome because I love space. The director and uh, filmmaker Noel Clark, I met with him earlier this year and he sounded quite excited about potentially doing a project. Whether anything happens, who knows? So it's, it's all good. I really do genuinely feel like I'm taking several leaps, not steps, but leaps in the right direction. I'm very excited, genuinely. I think 2015 is going to be insane. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite a few things.